Can you splits it showing up? I can just look. Hi everyone. Oops, I just changed it. Okay. Here is the paper that we're working on and everybody has a set of four papers like this. We call it skeleton notes in that we just have to fill in a few things. So that's what we're working on now. We took our quiz and we finished up. Some of us finished up. They're almost finished up our lab. So now we're into the new information and we're starting to videotape now. So Abby, Alex, and who's the other one? Gianni. Oh, okay. Just Allie, uh, just uh, Abby and Alex. And hope you're doing okay. And we we'll hope to see you on Wednesday in class. All right. Filling in. The first word is supposed to be electricity. So fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Let me see that you fixed it. Fix it. Okay. All right. So we're all on the same page. Fix it. El electricity. Oh. All right. The flow. See where we are. We're starting at the very beginning, and electricity is a flow of charged particles through a conductor. The word conductor is going to have trouble fitting in there, but... Because when I started making these notes, I had it on a regular size sheet of paper, and then I thought, oh, wait a minute, it's not going to fit in their comp book. So then I cut it off, so the conductor got, got slashed. All right. Got slashed. It did. You have this picture of a guy running. I know. Seems very violent. All right. Kinetic energy of the particles does work for us. So when we have uh, electricity, we have these tiny particles moving, and it's actually that motion that is kinetic energy that we can harness to do all kinds of wonderful things for us. So. It's the kinetic energy that gets us so, so many benefits. All right, so let's take a chemical, and I drew it there. Here's a chemical, and it needs electrons. I know the top I said, yeah, it needs electrons, or wants them. So I'll say it needs negative charged particles. And then there's a, a barrier. And the chemical cannot go across the barrier. On the other side of the barrier, there is a, um, it has too many, the chemical that has an excess. You have it as a chemical that wants to. Yeah. So I said it as needs, uh, wants to. Oh, you're right. Okay. I'm sorry. Let me fill that in then. I forgot that. There's a blank in yours. So. What I wanted to say is, let's all do it the same. All right. Up here, a chemical that wants to lose electrons. And a chemical down here that has an excess. I'm sorry, he wants to lose electrons. Chemical down the bottom wants to gain electrons. Right. And the barrier exists between two, the two. <coughs> Thank you. I forgot I had a blank in the middle of that. So you can actually box it in and create, unless it's, it is already boxed. So we cannot pass this barrier. So what happens if I put a conductor from here to here? So call this a conductor. Conductor, I think you know from your past in electricity studies, it's a, a material through which uh, electrons flow. What do you think is going to happen along this conductor then? Will they be exchanged? Yes. So the chemical up here has, it can't pass this barrier. This is the unpassable barrier for these two chemicals. But if I do give it a pathway, which connects the top half to the bottom, the extra electrons in the top will flow through this conductor. So put some arrows in showing the flow of electrons. And it will go to the bottom where it wants to gain electrons. And that is actually, that flow is called an electrical circuit. Does that show up on the board, on the video? Yeah. Okay. 
All right. So if, if you would please put in your conductor the flow, uh, the arrow flows, and the electric circuit. Jonathan, are you with us? Draw the connector from the top to the bottom. Like that. And label it. All right, what is this thing, this beautiful thing that I just drew? What is that? You don't recognize it? Yeah. Let's see if I have one. Oh, is it a battery? Oh, <laughs> good. I don't have to draw one out. All right, on the bottom there, this is a battery. That's exactly what a battery is. It's two chemicals in this condition, and they are connected internally so that this flow occurs. So, what is it called when all the loose electrons get down here where it needs to go, where they want to gain electrons, and there's no more extra? What's that called? Balance. Nope. A dead battery. A dead battery. <laughs> That's exactly right. So, when, when all extra electrons have passed through, we have a dead battery. All right. <laughs> Have you ever noticed the ratings or numbers on a battery? They're 1.5 sometimes, and sometimes they're 9. Did you catch the unit that is by, by those numbers? Volt. Volts, right. So let's talk about the ratings. 1.5 volt, fill it in, and 9 volts. So we need a definition for a volt. So where it says definition, we're putting the word volt. And the volt is electrical potential That's it. electrical potential in other words it has a strong a voltage is right here if there's a lot of electrons here they create a pressure when they are connected and there's a lot of need down here there's a pressure or a potential for a lot of flow so it often depends on the chemical itself and the conductor, how much electrical potential or voltage there is. There is a, uh, the unit for electrical potential is volts, and the symbol is V, so it makes sense for once, right? Normally I say something like, the unit is volts and the letter is W or something, you know, so this one actually makes sense. All right. So to explain a little bit more in terms of what we've seen in the past, do you, did I draw a little negative thing and a little positive thing? Yeah. And did I say that yeah. this was fixed? Yeah. All right. So what's going to happen if we have a loose cannon, a negative charge out of here, and a fixed charge here? There is negatives of track. We've had that in the past. And so that is a creation of motion called kinetic energy. And we learned that kinetic energy is never not created or destroyed. So where did that kinetic energy come from? It had it just up here. It came from potential energy. I mean from electrical potential. Sorry. Which is the electrical part, it's like the same thing as potential energy in the electricity world. So, the question is where did it come from? When I said it, I meant kinetic energy. So you can cross out the word it and put KE if that makes more sense. Where did the KE come from in this picture? It came from electrical potential, voltage. Voltage is the same thing, voltage. So when you hear that word, it's a different kind of concept, isn't it? It's sort of like the pressure or the, the, the setup is there. Sort of like when we studied the rock that was just sitting on the top of the cliff. It had a potential energy just sitting there. All right. Let's talk about charge. Charge has a unit, and I will talk about charge by giving you an example of the charge for an electron and the charge for a proton. So under, in that blank, the electron's charge is the electron's charge is negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 columns. Charge 
is rated in columns. So that's C. Let me show you how to spell it. It has a lots of OUs in it. It is spelled C-O-U-L-O-M-B, columns. And that is a name after one of the, the um, physicists who studied electricity. Columns. Columns is a large number, so you'll see a lot of times that I use millicolumns. A thousandth of a column is a typical charge. So I gave you this one. Now look how small it is. Times 10 to the negative 19. That means I move that zero over 19 times. That's an extremely small number. So a lot of times we work in millicolumns, so that would change it to negative 16. It's still pretty small, but it's not quite as small. All right. Now, before I, I reveal to you the proton's charge, I want to tell you how much bigger a proton is than an electron. Do you see that spot there? The proton is 1,800 times bigger than an electron. 1,800 times bigger. So, are you filling all this in? Let me see how.